So now, even though they have both the switching still between the accountant view and the business view, there's not a big difference between the two. And it looks to me like now they've gone back to the accountant view being the default. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to assume that's going to be the, what they're going to do going forward because it looks like that's, the, that's where they are going. That's why we update the, the course from time to time because that's one of the things that will change. They'll change the look and feel of the website. The other view was fine. You could find all the same stuff was in it. They just, they just formatted it a little differently and tried to make it you know casual language, which might actually make it more difficult in some ways you would think because the formal language often has a reason <laughs> that it's formal because it's, it's trying to really identify what exactly you're doing. But in any case, so we're going to be in the accountant view. We're not going to be switching back to the business view too much because it looks like the accountant view is basically the default that they're going back to at this point in time. Now, quick review on the basic screen formatting. You have the center of the screen here, which is this display screen. So the first time we open the QuickBooks, this display screen will be the dashboard oftentimes. And it's kind of funny because the dashboard is like the least used thing oftentimes. You're probably not gonna use maybe the dashboard to go to a lot of places in part because they keep changing the dashboard. So, so we don't really know what's gonna pop up here. It's kind of a mystery. It's kind of like a, a surprise every time you open up QuickBooks to see what their dashboard's gonna look like. So what you typically will use for navigations are gonna be the new button up top, the uh, navigation that are side drops, what you might call them, the bar on the left-hand side, and then this icon up top for the cog and possibly your icon over here, but mainly the cog item. And then the thing that you go into will be displayed in the middle. Now, because this is an online software, we can also adjust the screen by zooming in. If I'm on, I'm on a Windows machine here, the easiest way to do it here is to go hold down control, scroll up on your mouse wheel, and you can see that the size of the screen changes. So this is 200% of the screen. So that is great because if you wanna get larger text or anything like that, you can easily zoom into the screen because it's a web-based software. However, it also causes problems, this screen being dynamic like this, changing as you zoom in, because that means the icons will actually change. You can see this icons have changed up top because now I have zoomed in. Therefore, if you're working on a, on a non-standard size screen, then it's likely that your icons will be slightly different due to the web page trying to maximize the screen size for, for optimal use given your interface, right? So, so if you don't see all the icons that I see, you might scroll out of the screen to see if you can see it. So for example, all web-based softwares are designed to work on tablets now and phones. Tablets and phones are gonna have a different size screen and therefore the layout of the screen is gonna look a little bit different and you, can, and you can fix that or you can possibly find what is there by zooming in and out of the screen, which will typically give you less options when you zoom in. There's gonna be less things up top and more in like a drop-down format. And then when you zoom out, it's gonna give you more options in terms of the headers uh, up top is the general idea. Also note that if you're zooming into a, a form, if you open like an invoice and you zoom into the form, it works pretty, pretty well. There's different formats of the invoice now, and we'll talk about that more as well. But if you zoom into the invoice, then, uh, then that's nice because, because it gives you more detail. But when you start to populate the invoice and then add it, sometimes being too zoomed in could have a problem or, or cause issues with the data input. Therefore, if that happens, you just zoom back out zoom back out again to 100% and then do the data input again. QuickBooks has gotten a lot better at that. So if you are entering a data input form while zoomed in, it usually works pretty well right now. But if for whatever re reason it glitches up, it might be because you're zoomed in too far and that caused an issue with the, with the website. So just stop it, cancel possibly, go back in and then enter it at 100%. The next thing to note is that you might want to have multiple windows open. 
such as the reports. You might want to have your reports. We will do this every time. We'll open up the balance sheet and the income statement, not until we actually have something in them. But once we start to build the balance sheet and the income statement, we will open them up every time in another tab so that we can have three things open. We can look at the data input. We can see the reports. There's a couple ways that you can open new tabs. What you can do is you could actually right click oftentimes on the link you want to open and then open link in a new tab like this. That's great because and then you can see it populating in the new tab up top or you can right click on the tab up top and duplicate the tab. I'm not going to add a new tab. I'm going to duplicate the tab and then possibly look for whatever you want to open within it, such as the reports on the left hand side and then the profit and loss in this case, otherwise known as the income statement. Now, so that can take a little bit getting used to if you're used to web-based software, I'm sorry, desktop software like uh, a QuickBooks desktop. And part of the thing that needs to be getting used to is that you'd have to make sure you refresh or run the report every time you do data input. Because although the, this is on one website, if you do the data input over here, invoices, checks, and so on, then this side of the screen, this other tab might not pick it up until you actually run the report again. So you have to remember every time you go from, from one tab to the other, run the report. And if that doesn't work, you refresh the entire screen up top. But typically if you're looking at reports, which is usually what we use this for, you can just refresh the report and it will work and you don't have to refresh the entire uh, page here. Let's go back to the first tab. Now, when we, when we do the actual data input, then the general layout is going to be if I'm working on something that is a data data transaction, meaning these are things that happen on a cyclical, cyclical basis. They're normal transactions. Normally, they will be up here in the plus button. The accounting system is cyclical, right? It repeats typically on a month by month basis. And within this accounting cycle, there are smaller cycles or different timing cycles that repeat such, and we can break them down into the customer, or you can call it sales cycle, revenue cycle, accounts receivable cycle, vendor cycle, otherwise known as expense cycle, purchases cycles, uh, you can call it, or a, a payable cycle, and then employee cycle, otherwise known as like the payroll cycle. And these three cycles will be more or less complex depending on the type of industry you are in, the industry often requiring more advanced or less advanced things such as an accrual basis on the customer side, invoices and bills versus a cash basis uh, being on the customer side, you would have the sales receipts or possibly using a deposit form versus on the vendor side, you would be a cash base using expense or check forms and payroll is an accrual thing if you're running it within QuickBooks. If you have payroll outside of QuickBooks by a third party vendor, you might be able to use more of a cash based system. We'll talk more about that uh, in a future presentation. So, so that's the general idea there. Now, once you do the data input of these forms, then you also have to track your communication with the people we're doing business with as a bookkeeper, meaning 